Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Mr. Jeffrey P. Parsons, Executive Director of the United States Army Contracting Command, welcome to today's Colors and Casing Ceremony. Today, the Army Contracting Command and Expeditionary Contracting Command will uncase their colors, symbolizing the official move of the commands from Fort Belvoir, Virginia to Redstone Arsenal, Alabama. We welcome the distinguished guests, families, and friends who have joined us here today to celebrate this significant event. We also want to thank the Army Materiel Command Brass Quintet, led by Staff Sergeant Scott Vizaden, for providing today's musical selection. The official party is comprised of Mr. Parsons and Command Sergeant Major Tony L. Baker from the Army Contracting Command, and Colonel Timothy Strange and Command Sergeant Major John L. Murray from the Expeditionary Contracting Command. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of the national anthem and the invocation. The AMCOM chaplain, Lieutenant Colonel Len Kircher, will now come forward to provide the invocation. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Gracious God, out of nothing you commanded and the world came to be, and out of the darkness you brought order and light. And today, as the colors of these commands are uncased, may the need which birthed these units be fulfilled by it in support of our beloved soldiers around the world. May we constantly recall the great principles we as soldiers and Army civilians live by, and may those eternal values be represented in all that we do to support our great Army. We thank you for the hard work so many put into bringing these units here, and may this command sustain and maintain the cause of freedom and peace for your world, and may your spirit sustain and maintain the cause of freedom and peace within the human soul. We pray these things in your most holy name. Amen. Please be seated. The Army Contracting Command, also known as ACC, is a major subordinate command of the U.S. Army Materiel Command, also known as AMC. The ACC provides global contracting support to warfighters through the full spectrum of military operations. If a soldier shoots it, drives it, flies it, wears it, eats it, or communicates with it, AMC provides it and the ACC contracts for it. In 2007, the Secretary of Defense established an independent commission on Army acquisition and program management in expeditionary operations, commonly called the Gansler Commission. As a result of this commission's findings, on 30 January 2008, the Army established the U.S. Army Contracting Command Provisional and activated the unit at Fort Belvoir, Virginia on 13 March 2008. Achieving full operational capability in October 2009, ACC aligns and consolidates Army contracting manpower and dollars. The ACC also provides a centralized contracting capability to support modularity, better manages and controls Army contracting assets both within and external to the continental United States, 
and establishes a single contracting face to the Army Service Component Commands. The ACC is comprised of two subordinate commands and six major contracting centers. The Expeditionary Contracting Command supports forward deployed forces and OCONUS installations. The Mission and Installation Contracting Command supports CONUS installations. The ACC has contracting centers at six locations, Redstone Arsenal, Alabama, Aberdeen Proving Ground, Maryland, Picatinny Arsenal, New Jersey, the National Capital Region, Rock Island Arsenal, Illinois, and Warren, Michigan. The ACC is comprised of more than 5,500 military and civilian personnel at 117 locations worldwide. The ACC has coordinated and provided support for U.S. and Allied troops in Iraq and Afghanistan and provided humanitarian assistance after natural disasters in Haiti, Pakistan, and Japan. In fiscal year 2010, ACC executed more than 261,000 contracting actions worth $92.9 billion. The Expeditionary Contracting Command, or ECC, stood up at Fort Belvoir, Virginia in 2008 as one of two subordinate commands of the Army Contracting Command. The ECC took control of five contracting support brigades, also known as CSBs, from the Army Sustainment Command the 408th CSB supporting Southwest Asia, the 409th CSB supporting Europe, the 410th CSB supporting the Americas, the 411th CSB supporting Korea, and the 412th CSB supporting North America. Subsequently, a 6th CSB, the 413th, was activated to support the Pacific. The ECC contracting teams deploy to support exercises, combat missions, and humanitarian assistance throughout the world. When a 7.0 magnitude earthquake st struck Haiti on 12 January 2010, ECC contracting teams deployed to provide contracting support and expertise to aid the relief effort. The ECC provided the same support in Pakistan after disastrous flooding ravaged the country. These are two of the 108 worldwide missions that the ECC conducted in fiscal year 2010. In the 18th century, the regimental colors were carried into battle by the junior officer of the regiment. The colors served both as a ready identification of friendly and enemy armies and as a rallying point during battle. The American Army copied this tradition until 1813 when the responsibility for carrying the colors was given to a color sergeant. Although the practice of carrying the colors into battle was discontinued at the end of the 19th century, the traditions of maintaining the colors and the color guard have been preserved for military ceremonies. The senior NCO of the organization is traditionally responsible for maintenance and care of the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, Mr. Parsons and Command Sergeant Major Baker will come forward to officially encase the ACC colors. The very soul of a military unit is symbolized in the colors under which it fights, for they record the glories of the past, stand guardian over its present destiny, and ensure inspiration for its future. The colors lead the unit into battle. When in action, resolve not to part with the colors, but with your life. Today, the colors serve as a binding symbol of continuity and point of inspiration for the future. Commanders and soldiers come and go, but the colors remain steadfast. Today, ACC and ECC uncase their colors, symbolizing completion of the unit's headquarters relocation from Fort Belvoir, Virginia to Redstone Arsenal, Alabama. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, Colonel Strange and Command Sergeant Major Murray will come forward to officially encase the ECC colors. The 
The ECC's mission is to plan and execute effective and agile contracting support for U.S. Army Service Component Commanders in support of Army and Joint Operations and to provide effective and responsible contracting support for OCONA's installation operations. The ECC provides contracting services to Army and Joint Installations worldwide. In 2011, ECC continues to grow and adapt in its efforts to provide continuously improving contracting support to the Army. The command continues to grow as the 414th CSB prepares to stand up in Italy in support of the U.S. Army Africa Command. The ECC will continue to provide preeminent expeditionary contracting capability within the Department of Defense. The ECC is comprised of a professional and customer-focused team of military and civilian contracting experts dedicated to supporting the warfighter. Sir, the Expeditionary Contractor Command is on site and is executing the mission. Well done and proceed. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I now yield the microphone to the Executive Director of the Army Contracting Command, Mr. Jeffrey P. Parsons, for his remarks. Well, good morning. And beautiful day. Uh, I, I could tell you last night as I was watching the clouds build up and the thunderstorms coming in, and I was thinking it wasn't too long ago there was some nasty weather that came through here. I wasn't so sure I was going to see this tent today when I, uh, when I came in. But, uh, but Chaplain, I uh, was doing some prayers, and I think... Uh, well, with your help, we got the beautiful, beautiful today. So uh, I think this is really wonderful with this weather uh, for our uncasing ceremony down here in our new home, Sweet Home, Alabama. And uh, I am really glad to uh, to be here. Um, I want to thank some of our uh, guests that uh, that came. I see uh, Ronnie Cronister, our uh, Deputy to the Commanding General at AMCOM, Mr. Bill Marriott, the AMC G1, uh, Brigadier General Chris Tucker, one of our partners from USASAC, and uh, Mr. Masservi, who's the deputy to the Space Missile Defense Command, one of our uh, very important uh, customers. So, and Colonel Hamilton, and I see you here as well. Good to see you again. Thank you for being here. Listen, I just want to thank all of you for, uh, for coming out today. Um, this really does mark another move for the Army Contracting Command and the Expeditionary Command. Uh, as, I, as you heard in the introduction, uh, we just established this command in 2008, in March of 2008. And uh, on the parade fields right in front of the uh, AMC building up at, uh, <clears throat> up at uh, Fort Belvoir. And it's just amazed me uh, what we have been able to accomplish over the last three years. In fact, you know, when I look over my, uh, my career, um, I honestly can say I you know, didn't know how I ended up uh, being where I am. Uh, I never imagined, especially when I was an Air Force colonel, that I would be leading a two-star Army, uh, Army command. I can certainly tell you that. Um, but, you know, there's this verse in the book of Proverbs. It's Proverbs 19.21, and it reads, Many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is purpose of the Lord that will stand. And I think that's really been true of my career. And I think it's also representative of what has happened to the ACC um, in, uh, in our short time frame. In 2008, our ACC headquarters staff and really our AMC counterparts spent countless hours uh, working to get the structures and staff in place at Fort Belvoir to build the ACC headquarters and the ECC headquarters. In fact, at the time, four-star uh, General Griffin, he said to me, Jeff, you've got to move out very quickly. Um, the AMC staff, especially the G1, was a huge help in helping us bring on people very quickly to, uh, to man that, uh, that operation. So we had just gotten ourselves pretty much established, and in the end of 2009, the Army said, okay, now we want you to move to Redstone Arsenal. And this was after we had stood up there at, uh, at Fort Belvoir and gotten our structures in place, a lot of people on board, and then they said, okay, now move. So I think this was a test uh, to see how resilient we were. But you can take a look around here, and in 18 months, uh, you know, not only did all these relocatable facilities get stood up, but we actually moved about 400 positions down here to, uh, to Redstone Arsenal. And I look at all the folks that were subject to BRAC. We weren't a BRAC move. We were a discretionary move. Most organizations under BRAC had five years to move. We had a year and a half. So I think this is a real tribute to our, uh, to our workforce. We had a lot of challenges. 
Um, but we did face those challenges head on. Uh, at the same time, we had to focus on providing quality contracting support to uh, our warfighters. Again, you heard in the remarks, uh, we had Haiti that popped up. We had Pakistan that popped up. We had issues over in Japan, and, uh, uh, let alone the other 100 missions that we uh, supported in 2010. Uh, so I think as you took a look at uh, what we were faced with having to support worldwide operations, plus this move, again, a huge tribute to all of our, uh, all of our men and women that in the ACC and the ECC. You heard about our command. Uh, we got two one-star commands now. Um, part of that Gansler Commission that was mentioned, uh, the uh, direction from the recommendations from Gansler to the Secretary was you need to get general officers back into contracting. Uh, the Army has followed through with that. Uh, both the Mission Installation Contracting Command and the ECC are headed up by one-star generals. Uh, we now have a one-star general over at the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and a colonel promotable. Uh, up at uh, the Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Army for Procurement. I keep telling General Dunwoody she's got one more to do, which is the two-star, so that they can take over the ACC and I can move on to do some other things. Now, <clears throat> you heard about what the different missions of, uh, of the ECC and the, and the Mission and Installation Contracting Command. I think Command Sergeant Major Jackson's here somewhere, uh, representing the, uh, the MIC. Uh, that's a very large organization as well. Um, and they uh, have about 1,700 employees that are uh, at spread out throughout the United States. I think every in Army installation in the United States, you will find an ACC, Mission and Installation Contracting Command office there. And, uh, and oftentimes, the, the MIC doesn't get the notoriety because they're not doing the deployments and supporting the expeditionary forces in a forward-deployed environment, and they're not buying helicopters or ground combat vehicles, but the thing that has always struck me about what they do at the installation level is not only do they take care of the soldiers when they're home, but more importantly, take care of their families. And I think we all know that when our soldiers are deployed and the families are left at home, their care, their feeding is very, very important to, uh, to the soldiers and the Mission Installation Contracting Command does a wonderful job in providing that, uh, providing that support. So we have really uh, matured as a, as a command. Uh, we have brought in over 800 entry-level people in the last uh, two and a half years. Again, uh, a lot of great work by our folks in uh, the personnel system to bring those folks on. We've more than doubled our military in, in contracting since we stood up this command. And fortunately, uh, thanks to Congress, and I know we've had some congressional staffers here from the local congressional districts, uh, they have provided some additional training money that has allowed us to, uh, to develop our, our, our military and our civilian workforce. In fact, we've been using a lot of that money to take people at mid-career point and uh, do developmental assignments throughout our enterprise to get them exposed to different types of contracting and what we do. I want to thank our transition team. Um, as you can well imagine, uh, trying to orchestrate a move like this is not something that uh, you pull off without a lot of planning and a lot of hard work. And uh, the number of folks that have been involved are, are uh, <clears throat> too many for me to, uh, to read each and every name. Uh, but our uh, G4 really played a lead role in uh, getting that all accomplished. And I also want to thank the garrison, uh, Colonel Ham Hamilton, uh, you guys have just been over backwards to help us get this all established, uh, find room for us, and uh, ensure that uh, all the uh, relocatables got in, in, in place. At the same time, I want to thank the, uh, the Huntsville community. Um, you know, as soon as it was announced that we were down here, the Huntsville community, Tennessee Valley Authority, started to reach out to us, just as they did to Army Material Command when the BRAC move was announced. Uh, they they uh, opened up their arms. They were uh, willing to uh, come and talk to our folks up at Fort Belvoir about the benefits of being in, uh, in Huntsville. Uh, and I can tell you, I was very, very concerned at the time with AMC having been moved down here and what that impact was going to be uh, on the local community um, and then more importantly on some of the organizations here at, uh, at Redstone. And I know that my uh, contracting center here at the Aviation and Missile Command was very concerned about our headquarters moving here and, quote, stealing all of their people away and uh, creating some uh, significant gaps within their organization. But none of that happened. Uh, what really, truly amazed me was how people from all over the command uh, throughout the United States were willing to move here to be on our staff. 
Uh, as you can imagine, not everybody moved down here from Washington, D.C., so we had a lot of holes to fill. And we had people from across the United States. We even had people from Germany. We had people from Korea that joined our staff here. And I look at that and I say, you know, it wasn't this easy to get people into Washington, D.C., but it was a lot easier to get people here to Huntsville, and I think that's a tribute to this community that shows that it is very family-focused and it's also very focused on supporting its military. And I think that rang out very true yesterday through some of the events as we celebrated the Army's 236th birthday. So my thanks to the community leaders uh, as well. We could not have done that uh, without you. So I just want to wrap this up, and again, thank you for all uh, being here. Um, this has been a special day. I want to thank the, uh, the AMC band here as well. How about we give them a round of applause? <clears throat> I don't know how many of you attended the AMC uh, ceremony yesterday, but they had the full band there. Uh, they were tremendous. They were also participating in the event downtown at the Van, Van Braun Center. So I'm sure these guys are tired. And I thank you for making time for being here today. Thanks for attending today's event. Uh, God bless our soldiers, our civilians, their families, the U.S. Army, and our nation. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the Army song. The words to the Army song are printed on the back page of your program. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the uncasing ceremony. Thank you for attending. <laughs>